Welcome everyone to our foot and ankle module. This is again, one of my favorite modules that I get to teach. I think that the ankle and foot are so intricate and so interesting. Our feet are so dynamic and they actually have so many muscles on the bottom of them. And we tend to forget about that because we wear shoes all the time. And so it's great to re-envision what our feet can do for us and why we would have so many muscles at the bottom of our feet. So here's where I really get to confuse you. We have four layers of muscles in the foot. So I've tried to divide up what I'm showing you in the layers to make it less confusing, but it's still a lot. <laughs> so bear with me here. Try to, try to just get the concept. I'm not gonna test you on what the layers of muscles in the foot are, but I want you to understand that there is so much going on in the bottom of that foot that it's kind of a shame that we don't pay more attention to what we could be doing with our feet. Let's go with adductor digiti minimi. Digiti minimi is your little toe. That's the digiti minimi, right? So abductor, we know what abduction is. It's moving the toe out to the side. Did you know that your little toe has its own special abductor muscle? It has its own special abductor muscle and so does your big toe, but none of the other toes have their own special ab abductor muscles. Here we have abduc abductor digiti minimi because it's gonna help you move your pinky toe out to the side. So if you haven't self-experimented, make sure yours is working so you can pull your pinky toe outside. So then we move on to the reformer. The, we're gonna start on footwork. So I'm gonna let Kim get started on footwork on toes, Kim, if you would. The, the exercises on the reformer that are most valuable for the feet, uh, I think are for the ankles, I should say. We focus on ankles right now. But for the ankles are the ones that are more towards the toes or we call it monkey on a branch or bird on a perch uh, exercises. So here on Pilates V pressing out, the bar is sort of underneath her metatarsals and she's pushing out and back in. So a couple things worth talking about here. We're talking, uh, our goal is for good foot ankle alignment here. So we want to make sure that when you're on those balls of the feet with a little turnout, that both sides of the heel are together or the heels together, not stickled, not having the pinky side toes put more pressure on them than the big toes, right? Spread out across all the toes, heels holding together. This one gives a little more stability to the ankle. So most people can do this with good form more easily than if we turn parallel. So if Kim turns her feet parallel in monkey on a branch, she would stay at about the same level on the, across the metatarsals, the base of the balls of the feet or across all the balls of the feet, and then pressing out. Here, the heels are not necessarily really lifted up in this case. She's relaxing the heels, but she's working the feet a little bit more. So they're curling over the bar a little bit as she's going here. So there she is standing. She stands slightly behind the spring, which is correct, so that the angle of the knee isn't being pulled in a funny direction, right? And then she's gonna zipper squeeze heel to, in, to kind of big toe and squeeze the inner thighs together here keeping the alignment on both feet. So a little turn down on both feet, lifted through the inner thighs. And I love this one for that zipper feeling of the inner thighs zipping, the glutes wrapping uh, on the way down here, closed and then back open. And then the hardest one is actually doing this with a straight leg out, sweeping out and sweeping back in. But again, if you can get it, the zippering up of the inner thighs and the squeeze inward really helps activate the feet and arches and ankles so it's a really nice one if you haven't tried this one try it out it feels really nice um, to come together that way it really puts your whole body in a good nice place